we're going to be talking about the graphical derivative. In other words, when we look at the graph of a function, how could we then interpret and create a graph of the derivative of that function, or vice versa? If you have the graph of a derivative, how does that help you create the graph of the function? So first let's remind ourselves what the derivative describes. And remember the derivative, the derivative is describing the slope of a curve at each point on the curve. Now, remember that slope takes on meanings and applications. For example, the speed of the car would be the slope, or the speed at which anything is changing, the rate of change of an object. So we can graph not only where a function is, but we can graph how fast it's going at any point. Now, let's think about our two graphs. We would have a function graph, and we would have a derivative graph. The function graph tells us where we are at any point. The derivative graph tells us how fast we're going. And it's very important to keep that straight. So when you're looking at a function graph, that answers the question where. When you have a derivative graph, that answers the question, how fast? So what would our units look like? Well, typically our x-axis is a unit of time. Where are we on day one? Where are we on day two? Where are we five minutes from now, ten minutes from now, so on? may not be an actual unit of time, but it certainly represents that concept. The y value for each is going to take on a different value. When we're asking where something is, that's going to be a certain location. Maybe it's the number of miles we are from a certain point. Maybe it's how much money we made in the month. So the where does not have to be a physical where. It has to be a where are we in our lives. So if I'm a company talking about money, the where is how much money have we made at this point. Um, if I'm driving, the where is a number of miles. But over here, remember we're talking about how fast we are going. And so these are going to be units that represent rate of change. For example, it might be miles per hour if your units of time are hours and your uh, units of distance were miles. It might be dollars per month. So maybe it's how much money we make per month. So when we're talking about the derivative, that graph is telling us how fast we are going. So as we start to draw the derivative graph, the first thing we're going to want to do is set up the x-axis in the same way. So those two different graphs I just set up on the last screen, we're going to want the units on the x-axis to be exactly the same. But the y-axis are going to represent different units. So we typically don't put them on top of each other, but we might put them, uh, we don't overlay them, but we might put one above and one below. All right. Then we're going to look at several x values, determine what the slope's doing, and then we'll interpret our graph. So let's take a look. So this right here will be our f of x. And let's make our units of time. Um, let's make our units of time be the months. And let's make our y-axis our profit. So our y-axis is dollars. So remember, this is the graph of our function. So if I asked you, what was my profit for the second month, 
the profit for my second month would be right here and the profit was zero. Okay. Now if I wanted to know how fast my profit was changing, so is my profit decreasing, is my profit increasing, is my profit stagnant, what's my profit doing, I need to look at the graph or I need to look at the derivative. And so this is how much my profit is changing per month. So it's the change in profit. So even though I made zero dollars in profit on the second month, is there hope for me? Is my profit increasing or is my profit decreasing? Well, let's stick to that point and let me draw in a tangent line right here because when we talk about slope, we're really talking about slope of a tangent line and unfortunately that's not too good a news because at the second month my profit was zero dollars and the slope at x equals two is negative and so now my profit's going to go even lower as is indicated by my profit at three months at three months I had a negative profit okay so the units here might represent thousands of dollars. So profit in uh, thousands. So at month three, I had a profit of a negative thousand dollars. In other words, I had to dip into some savings or I had to call somebody to bail me out because I sp spent a thousand more dollars than I took in. So my profit was a negative thousand. So each point on this graph reps, represents for us a, uh, and not just the points I've marked, but all the points, um, but each point on that graph represents how much profit I actually made at each month and the slope of the curve is telling me whether I should be optimistic or whether I've got trouble ahead. So now let's start graphing my slope. So let's identify the units. Again, this will be months. And we want to try to set up the tick marks for the x-axis exactly the same so that we'll be able to compare. I was going to lose everything. Okay, now my y values take on a totally different um, value. Okay, these are going to be the amount of money per month. This is going to be our slope. So where am I at exactly this month? I'm going to use the top graph. What does my outlook look for next month? Am I going to improve or not improve? We're going to look at our slope graph. When I do this, what I like to do is a couple of key points first and then we'll sketch in the whole graph. So let's talk about a few key points. Let's talk about the, the and I'm going to do them in red as we go, so I'll circle this first one. That is at x is zero. At x is zero, the company is happy. happy. So at the beginning of this year, the, we made, right at the beginning of the year, we had $4,000 in profit. That was one of our highest profits we'd had in a long time. But what is getting ready to happen to our profit? Well, first of all, we got to talk about what is happening right here. If we reached a maximum, then we leveled off and our tangent line is horizontal there, which means at that exact moment that we hit a profit, we had a slope of zero. So notice where I put the red dot down at the bottom. Because at x is zero, even though I made $4,000 profit, at one moment in time, I stalled. I wasn't improving, but I wasn't decreasing either. Okay, so the slope at x equals zero is zero. Now let's go back to the general graph and I'm going to use a light color hoping that, no, I didn't want to do that. 
um, that we can see it. Uh, let me pick a color here. Just maybe like a, I'll use a light, um, a light blue. Okay, so here my slope is generally positive. My, my profits are going up. But then on the other side of that red dot, my slopes are negative. They're generally going down. I hit another area where I am um, leveling out. I bottom out right here at x equals 3. At x equals 3, I have another max or min. I'm bottoming it out. The slope of my tangent line here is zero. So I can also go to that point down here and make a slope of zero. And then if I go back to that light color again, after that red line, my slope continues to be positive. And so maybe that's indicating that I figured out what I was doing wrong and now I'm on the up and I hope that it continues to be positive. Alright, so let's take a look here. Where the red horizontal lines are, I have slope of zero. Therefore, those are on the zero points on my derivative graph. Now, to the left of zero, all of my slopes are positive. So all of my graph of the derivative has to be above the x-axis because it is a the slope below the x-axis is a negative slope. So when our when our slope in our function is positive We've got to be above the x-axis in the derivative graph. When the slope is negative, like between the two red dots, we have to be down in the negative slope area, which is below the x-axis. And when the graph is positive again after x is 3, we have to be above the x-axis. So the graph of the slope is above or below the x-axis based on whether it's a positive slope or a negative slope. So remember all the y values down at the bottom are the slopes of the function. All right, so we've talked about what if our slope is zero. Let's pick a couple other points and talk about them. So let me switch colors here again. Let me go to green. Let's take this um, green point right here that is at negative 3. So three months ago, last year, three months ago, we made another zero profit. Now, even though our profit was zero for that month, was it increasing or was it decreasing? Well, my slope is positive so that means I'm going upwards, that means I'm improving. So my slope is a positive value and it's a fairly steep slope and we're just estimating here but if I did this tangent line um, it almost looks like it might be something and this is an estimate that my slope might be something like 5 over 1. That is, you'll see what I, I'm getting at in here in just a minute. But that is a pretty steep slope, so I'm going to use that to estimate that the slope of the graph there is about 5 over 1. Okay, now without the actual equation, you can't, you can't do it exact. Now, let's talk about this next green point at x is negative 1. That is still a positive slope. But how does that green tangent look compared to the green tangent I drew before? It's still pretty steep, but it's getting a little bit flatter. And so if we said this was approximately 5 over 1, 
maybe this is approximately 3 over 1. In other words, it's not quite as steep. And so we would have a point something like this. Okay. And so the slope of this curve is a fairly constant slope in the sense that it's um, very smooth, it's changing at about the same, uh, it's slowing down at about the same rate. It's going to be almost a linear change, might be a little bit of a curve. Um, if you actually drew a line there, you would be justified because this is a nice symmetric curve. So that gives us an estimate then of where, um, you know, the slope at negative 2 is. We would say it's somewhere between 5 over 1 and 3 over 1, okay? And maybe this point right here that I just drew is a little low. doesn't really matter there, but what we're saying is, is that as these green tangent lines get closer and closer to 0, the slope is getting closer and closer to zero. Notice that this green line down bottom, as it approaches that red dot, is getting closer and closer to zero because the flatness of the tangent line up above is getting flatter and flatter or closer to zero. Okay, now let's go between um, the two red dots. That entire slope is negative. Let me use purple for this one. That entire slope is negative. Let's talk about a few tangent lines. The first tangent line I'm drawing, I'll just label it 1, is a little bit flatter than the second tangent line I'm drawing, number 2. So first we, we're coming out of 0, so we're a little bit flat. Then we get steeper, but then where I drew number three, it started to flatten out again. So it came from flat, got steeper, then got flatter. Now let's just pick some numbers to help us. Let's say that this might be close to that three over one like it was on the other side. For the next one to be steeper, that might go to our five over, oops, five over one. And then to get flatter again, and it, it looks, you know, even more flatter than that other one, but we might do 2 over 1 for that. And again, I'm, I'm really making up those numbers, and they're all relative. It doesn't matter if that's the exact slope at this point. We're just trying to get a feel for the graph. The units on the y-axis are slope. We just don't know what those numbers would be. Now, remember our slope is negative in the purple region. So we have to be down below. So first I had a slope somewhere around 3, then I had a slope somewhere around 5, then I had another one back at 2, and then I hit that slope of 0. So the, the graph in the purple region is going to do something like this. And I missed my dot there. Maybe I can just make it a big dot. <laughs> okay. Now, Here's what students always say. Wait a minute, you said the slope was negative, but part of that purple graph is going up down in, in the uh, derivative graph. But look at all these purple points I'm making. Remember the y value here are the slopes. You're, if you're saying, oh, but that graph's going up, you're actually looking at the slope of the slope, and that does represent something, but something different. So all of those purple dots are below the x-axis. They all have negative, so technically these should have all been negative 3, negative 5, negative 2. So this is negative 3 over 1 slope. This is negative 5 over 1 slope because it's at negative 5. Okay, and this is negative 2 over 1 slope because their y values are all negative. Okay. And now let's go to the right of the red dot and talk about what happens now that we're back in the positive. And so we could look at something like this area, number 1, this area, number 2, in this area number three. 
In all of those cases, the slope is positive, so we will be above the x-axis on our derivative graph, and we will um, be getting steeper, but not nearly as quickly as over in the green area. Um, so we might be a little more gradual that maybe this is 2 over 1 and this is only 3 over 1 and maybe this is 4 over 1. It's kind of just a nice gradual growth. So we're going to expect that this graph kind of heads like that. So here's the 2 over 1, here's the 3 over 1, here's the 4 over 1. And technically my points should be lined up with up above, but you get the idea, I hope. So if I gave you these two graphs and I asked how much did you make in month four and then I asked you um, what's the outlook for the future. Is it going to get better? Is it going to get worse? Now I can bet there's a lot of economists that have been asking these exact same questions. As you listen to the news these days and they talk about the unemployment rate is blank, like they'll say the unemployment rate is 3%, but it looks like it's going to drop a couple of percent over the next year. They have just used a model graph to answer that question. They have used the top graph to say the current employment rate is 3%. They have used the bottom graph to say, but it looks like it's going to drop 2% over the next year because the rate of change or the amount of drop or the amount of increase is slope. So anytime you hear an economist or an accountant or anybody like that, talk about what is currently happening and what might happen over the next few months. What is currently happening is the function graph. What is going to happen over the next few months is the derivative graph. Now they probably don't know they're looking at a derivative graph, but that is what they're looking at is the rate of change of their function. So how much did you make in month four? We're going to use this graph. We're going to go to the fourth month. We're going to find the y value. And maybe that's, uh, if those were units of 1,000, if this were negative 1,000, maybe we made negative $500. So we were in the hole $500. That is actually what our profit would have been. In other words, we had to dip into savings. What does my future look like? Um, so if I go to the fourth, which again is right here, and now I'm on the derivative graph, and I look at my y value, and I think we had it up here too, my slope or my y value is 2, okay, or 2 over 1. And so what we would say is that we would improve um, $2,000 over the next month or 2 over 1 as our slope. Okay, so we're going to look at this graph when we want to know what the outlook looks like. Are we going up or down? It's a good thing they didn't ask us about after month 1. Because after month one, we did make $3,000 profit, looking at the top graph, but we are getting ready to lose quite a bit over the next month. So if I am an investor in a company and I see that happening, I may doubt my willingness to um, help that company. Okay. I know that this can be confusing, but if you keep reminding yourself that the function graph, the y values tell you where, the derivative graph tells you the slope 
or what the outlook looks like or what's going to happen to that company in the near in the near future now I would pause and and you could pause your recording and really just you know try this um, but then when you're ready the next example has to do with um, going backwards okay so now we're gonna go backwards let me get my blue ink okay so now what we have is this is our derivative okay so this tells us the slope so the y-axis here the points on here are the slope this is a positive slope and down here is a negative slope so this is telling us how uh, fast our profit is growing now the idea is is if I know where you started and I know how fast you're growing or not growing depending on positive or negative I can determine where your company will be let me say that again if I happen to know where your company started your company and this is just a um, an example in terms of the numbers I'm making up okay but so again if these are months I forgot to mark this as months and months and so up here would be dollars per month because it has to be a rate down here would be dollars so if for example I knew that three months ago when you opened your doors you had three thousand dollars in your account okay so maybe this is what's in your bank account however you want to look at this example okay three months ago so at X is negative three you had three thousand dollars in your account I am now going to show you what your accounts going to do from three months ago up to four months from now so if the zero were right now I'm talking about um, three months ago and I need to put an extra let's say four months ago so my tick marks match up there okay so four months ago you were at three thousand dollars that's where you were okay that's your function now let's talk about how fast your bank account was changing okay remember that all of these points that I'm marking in red on the derivative graph are on the left even this though this graph is going down you have to remember this is the slope graph so these are the bank account is increasing but because those red dots are getting closer and closer to zero they are just increasing slower so at first my bank account was increasing quite quickly but then it started increasing slowly over on the right side again these points are positive my bank account is increasing quicker and quicker because as those dots get oh, farther and farther from zero as that that dot way up here at four or five that's saying my bank accounts really growing and the way that it looks is it's going to start growing and not stop but in the middle let me switch colors and I should have used red below and green above but that's okay between here and here between where our graph hits zero our slopes are negative so all of the points in that little bowl area are negative which means the account is decreasing on both sides 
but how fast it's decreasing changes. First it starts off slower because this first green point is closer to zero than my second green point. Starts off slower, gets faster. So down here at the bottom, again, don't look at the flatness of this because this is the slope itself. That slope is like negative four. We're losing uh, $4,000 a month at that point. That's our biggest loss. And then it starts, it's decreasing, but it starts slowing down. We experience this with the big, you know, crash in the economy. Is at first, we were still making some money, it crashed, it crashed very, um, it got, it just kept, you know, started off, just crashed um, there, it maxed out, and then it stopped falling, but companies still lost money for a while, but they just lost less money. And then eventually they started turning, or hopefully soon, start turning a profit. Now let's talk about the two points where my graph hit zero. At those two points, that is where the slope equals zero, which means the tangent is horizontal, and that is where we either maxed out or had a min um, in our function graph because remember the slope at that point right there would be zero or the slope at that point would be zero. All right, so here we go. Let's start with the point that I know we have and that is, and again I just made it up, but that is at the negative four months, four months ago we had three thousand dollars in our bank account. The red dots up above says that my bank account was growing until negative two. So my bank account right here and at two. So again, if we use um, the blue dots, and let me put those blue dots. Well, I don't want to put those blue dots, but at x is negative two and at x is two is where we either maxed out or minned out. So from um, and, and technically this is negative four, meaning four months ago, but from negative four until x is two, so until this area right here, my bank account grew. And at first it grew more and then it started to slow down. So I'm going to make my bank account grow, but as I get to that line I have to start to level off because at some point my bank account started to level off. Now, I could technically use my slopes to get exact points. So my first slope is, looks like it's at about five. So technically I could go up five units over one unit and get my next point. And the next slope looks like it, it's at four. I could go up four over one and get my next point. So you can, if we actually had the function and we could actually find the slope values, we could do that and get the exact graph. My point right now is you understanding what these two graphs can tell us, not necessarily that it has to be exact. Now, at x is negative two, our graph does hit zero, which means we hit a max point, which means right here we level off. Now, our bank account is going to start decreasing because my slopes up in the green area are going to all be negative. So from this dotted line back to this green dotted line, so in between those green dotted lines, I'm going to be negative the entire time but I'm going to start off slow, get steeper, and then start off, then then get slower and go closer back to zero where we're going to have another min, okay? So I'm going to start slowly decreasing. At some point I'm going to decrease really fast, but then I'm going to start to level out. 
and I'm going to be an optimist that my bank account didn't go in the negative. So remember the graph I'm drawing is my actual bank balance. It is possible that this green line went down below the x-axis if my bank account got overdrawn. And if I were actually using values, then that, that would do that like if I were doing the 4 over 1. So for example right here that first dot looks like it's at negative 1 so technically I could go down 1 over 1 and get my first point and again so we could keep doing and then the next one negative 3 down negative 3 over 1 and get another point so you can actually get the values to see if you went below the x-axis. So now I'm at the blue dot again. The blue dot has slope of zero. If it has slope of zero, that means we curve out. And now I am back to the red area, and I totally mixed up those colors because red usually means bad, but that's all right. So in the red area, um, we have a positive slope that's definitely getting steeper. So I'm going to start off growing slow, but then I'm going to shoot up. Okay. So all of these points on this graph represent my bank balance. All of the points on this graph represent the change my balance will have. and companies look at this stuff all the time because they want to know are they going to have pitfalls or are they going to continually grow or when are they going to max out and when are they going to min out and can they make it through that rough period and all of that. So understanding how to produce these graphs number one, how to read them number two becomes pretty important when you're dealing in the working in the business field. Okay, so we did one example where we started with the function and made a graph of the derivative. Now we started with a derivative and we made the graph of the function. They're similar in, in um, style, but um, they're not all going to look that way, but I just wanted to use ones that we had room to write and take notes and, and that kind of stuff. Okay. Now the calculator, as I mentioned in the previous lecture regarding finding the derivative, can be helpful, um, especially if you have a function. So if you have the function um, y equals x squared, if you, so we know that the graph of that um, looks like this, okay? So that's my y equals x squared. If I put in the, cal in the calculator, under y equals, if I do n derive x squared comma x comma x, in this case do not put a number right here because I want it to graph this for all x's. Okay, so I want to graph it for all x's. If you wanted to know just the derivative or the slope at x equals 4, then you could put a 4 right there. If I do that, I'm going to, and I encourage you to do this on your calculator, is you would get a graph that looks something like that. So if you just took the graph, if you took the graph on the left and did the procedure of what we just did, your graph uh, for the derivative, so this is the derivative graph, should look like that. So I show this to you because you can use this to practice. Now you can only use it to practice in this direction. You can't um, practice backwards on this. So um, if you take, well, I guess you could in the sense that if you don't look at the first graph, okay? So if you take, uh, if you want to just make up a function, so make up a function like f of x equals 3x cubed, okay? Graph it in your calculator, see what it looks like. S draw the sketch of it like I did here. Okay. Then do the procedure that I just taught you on the last screen, and to check yourself, plug it into here. Now you could go backwards 
if the first thing you plugged in was, so if you plugged in um, n derive of 3x cubed comma x comma x, and that was the first thing you plugged in, you would get your derivative graph. And then to check it, just go plug in y equals 3x cubed and see if you got what you thought you should. Okay, so you could use it backwards either way. So the calculator can't actually give you the equation, but it can help with the function. So have a little fun with this. Try not to get frustrated, um, and, and it definitely takes practice. And uh, certainly ask for help if you need it. But this is what we needed to talk about in terms of understanding the relationship between the two graphs. Until next time, keep working hard.